Now, the U.S. is at the forefront of the strikes on Libya, deploying some of its heaviest firepower against Gaddafi's regime. That's despite Washington insisting for days that the U.S. would merely play a supporting role. Artis Ganichichikan explains. The Pentagon says they do not rule out more strikes, quote, if and when the need arises. If you watch American television, you get the impression that America's involvement uh, is a really good thing uh, and, and that there was no other option but intervention. But if you look at the polls, the majority of Americans oppose the U.S. involvement in the intervention. Fox News gives 65 percent. They're already unhappy that their government is spending tax dollars on inconclusive wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And adding one more hotspot is the last thing they want. Just this Saturday, the U.S. shot $75 million worth of missiles on Qaddafi's air defenses. Officials, uh, though, have promised that uh, it's going to be a fast war. Obama said that there will be no U.S. troops on the ground. But as of now, we know that the U.S. contribution in, in the strikes substantially outweighs all of the coalition forces combined. So it's really a hard task to create the appearance of not being the leading force. Also, the fact that President Obama did not interrupt his trip to Latin America is also kind of an indication that he doesn't want to be seen as the man in chief of uh, all this th thing. So it was uh, a very calculated decision, you could say. Speaking of the goals of the intervention, in Libya, as we know, is to protect civilians. That is the justification. But critics say we have to be careful with the official reasoning behind military campaigns and really question more. The U.S., for example, has a track record of starting military campaigns on false grounds. Eight years after the beginning of the war in Iraq, we're getting more evidence of lies told by U.S. officials to justify their invasion of the country. Take a look at this report. Airstrikes in Libya, a humanitarian act to protect civilians from a dangerous dictator. That's the reason given by the U.S. and its allies for their latest military foray. But when it comes to justifying its wars, America has become the nation that cried wolf. Especially now, when one of the key sources used ahead of the 2003 Iraq invasion has admitted he lied. I just wanted to do something for my country. I am satisfied there is no dictator there anymore. If asked, I would do the same thing again. I have no regrets. Rafid Ahmed Alwan al Janibi, aka Curveball, was seeking asylum in Germany back in 2000. He told German intelligence that Saddam Hussein had biological weapons mounted on trucks. They didn't believe him. And when U.S. intelligence requested his testimony before attacking Iraq, Germany told them he was unreliable. But that didn't stop top U.S. officials building their case, using him and no intelligence of their own. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. One of the so-called solid sources was an al-Qaeda suspect who lied under torture to CIA allies in Egypt about Saddam's ties with terrorists. The other was curveball. Even now, despite all the evidence of lies and deception, key players in the Bush administration are still in denial about their role in the events, saying they were not sufficiently informed. I don't know. That would have been at a different level. The NSC met frequently. Did they tell you anything? No. <laughs> you poor man. No, I don't know what. Are you not on the email list? Did they not? In their memoirs, both Colin Powell, the Secretary of State back then, and Donald Rumsfeld, the Defense Secretary, effectively duck responsibility and point the blame finger at others, mainly the CIA, specifically George Tenet, head of the CIA at the time. He said it was there and it wasn't. And they believed him because they wanted to invade Iraq. And Colin Powell was digging for information at the CIA headquarters in Langley across the river, digging for it because it wasn't there. He was trying to come up with something because he couldn't find it. Even after this latest revelation about curveballs lies, many Western media outlets put the following spin on the story. U.S. officials did not lie. They were duped. What it really reveals here is actually contrary to the headline that we saw from The Guardian, which was that the Americans were duped somehow by his story. And that really isn't a very accurate telling of what happened and that really the CIA wanted to be duped, if you want to use that word at all, but really they were looking for an excuse. They found one. The man who presented the case for war before the U.N. Security Council now says he was misled. Not that he, too, was part of an orchestrated plan to build a case for war. 
no matter the evidence. How was he duped so easily? I don't buy it. A lot of people followed orders, very likely knowing that what they were doing was wrong, but they wanted to be involved. They liked the power of Washington, the big job, the big fat salary. After eight years of embarrassing revelations, still no U.S. official has admitted lying. Most of those who took part in building the case for the Iraq war out of lies are now off the hook touring the country with their memoirs and saying they were duped. And many ask whether their exoneration and this quite public acceptance could teach a bad lesson to future leaders contemplating building a similar case for war. I'm Gaines Chekian reporting from Washington, RT.